Okay, it's no secret that Manila's Ninoy Aquino International Airport, the longtime primary gateway to the Philippines, is a bit of an outdated, congested, and confusing aviation hub, to put it mildly. Long lines, aging infrastructure, and sudden power outages have been some of the most widely publicized issues, among others. Naia, as the airport is referred to locally, exceeded its design capacity years ago in one of Asia's most populated cities. Nowadays, getting through and around Naia's numerous terminals and facilities can be very overwhelming, unless you know how to navigate the airport like a pro and take full advantage of its location and offerings. Today, I will be your guide and show you how to make your experience at Manila's massive airport as enjoyable, worthwhile, and seamless as possible. It's taken me years to figure out this sprawling aviation complex, but I've learned a lot that has helped me both better prepare for the challenges and appreciate the useful and positive aspects of Ninoy Aquino International Airport. My name is Nate, and stay tuned for plenty of tips and key information that will make your future travels to or through this Philippine gateway that much easier. All right, let's get started. First, let's very briefly look at the history and get a general overview of Manila's airport, just so we have some better context. Manila has actually had several primary airports in the last 100 years. Grace Park Airfield, the capital's first commercial airport that opened in 1935. Nielsen Airport, which operated from 1937 to 1948 in present-day Makati, and Nichols Field, originally a United States military airfield that was converted to accommodate commercial flights and referred to as Manila International Airport from 1948 to 1987, after which it became Ninoy Aquino International Airport in honor of a prominent Filipino politician who was assassinated at the airport in 1983. Manila's airport has grown dramatically ever since the end of World War II. And so too, the city has rapidly grown around it. The various styles and architectural features of passenger facilities on several sides of the airfield reflect this expansion over time. Present day Terminal 4, the smallest out of Naia's four terminals, was the first to be constructed in 1948. Terminal 1, also known as Ninoy Kino Terminal, opened in 1981 with twice the capacity of Terminal 4. The distinctive V-shaped Terminal 2, or the Centennial Terminal, was completed in 1998 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Philippine Declaration of Independence from Spain. Finally, the newest and largest addition, Terminal 3, faced years of delays before becoming fully operational in 2014. Today, Naya's four terminals and two runways sit nestled in the bustling metro area just seven kilometers south of Manila proper. There's clearly limited space for any new terminals or expansion projects, which largely explains the increasing levels of congestion in and directly around the airport. Nonetheless, the government is looking to privatize Naya so that the airport can be rehabilitated and expanded within the existing airport property. Furthermore, a new international airport is being constructed to the north in Bulacan, and there are plans for another international airport to be constructed in Cavite. These initiatives would provide much needed relief for Naya, as well as additional capacity to and from the capital. However, both projects are years away from completion. Now let's take a look at Naya's terminals and the options available for transferring between them. Terminal 1 is the furthest to the south and serves the following airlines. It's relatively easy to navigate, 
and there are a handful of shopping and dining options scattered around the building. There's also a dedicated airside lodging facility on the fourth floor with affordable rates for day rooms, which can be booked by ticketed passengers with long layovers. Arriving passengers walk down ramps to this meet and greet pickup zone adjacent to the parking lot in front of the terminal. Not far to the northeast is Terminal 2, and here is a list of the airlines it currently serves. Note that terminal assignments are subject to change, and up-to-date airline information and locations can be found on the official website for NIA, which I'll include in the description below. Terminal 2 has a beautiful, easy-to-understand layout with restaurants, shops, and exchange offices located both outside and within the building. There's even a large cafeteria serving classic Filipino dishes on the ground floor, and it's open to the public. Terminal 4 sits near the northernmost section of the airport, and it serves these airlines. Due to its small size, it's one of the easiest and quickest to navigate, though it can get busy at times with long lines zigzagging around the petite check-in area. Nearby, there are a few vendors selling food, drinks, and gifts. The drop-off and pickup zone is conveniently located directly outside the single-story building. Terminal 3 is the airport's largest, newest, and busiest, and it serves all the airlines listed here. It has an expansive selection of shops, restaurants, cafes, lounges, and more. So I'll come back and discuss Terminal 3 in much more detail shortly. It's important to mention that all terminals at NIA offer two hours of free Wi-Fi per day, and there are other internet providers with free and pay-to-use internet options. Electrical outlets and charging stations are available, but from my observations, they are sporadically placed and sometimes challenging to find. Additionally, all terminals have prayer rooms, medical facilities, ATMs, and currency exchange offices. If you're a foreigner visiting the Philippines, I do recommend getting some cash once you arrive. Many transportation services and businesses here, especially small businesses, do not accept credit or debit card payments. As a side note, don't accept the offer to complete ATM transactions in your home currency. This service is called Dynamic Currency Conversion, and with its wildly high markups, it is a massive waste of money. Complete credit and debit card transactions and withdrawals in the local currency, Philippine Pesos. Your credit card payment processor, like Visa or MasterCard, will do the currency conversion for you automatically at a much better rate. Also, be prepared to pay the standard 250 peso ATM withdrawal fee per transaction at almost all ATMs here in the Philippines. On top of this, I strongly encourage all foreign visitors to consult your bank's list of fees for any and all foreign transactions. If you're not aware, these fees can add up really fast. Now, let's address terminal transfers, as this can be very tricky and time-consuming without prior guidance. Ninoy Aquino International Airport does not have trains, trams, or underground walkways linking all the terminals. Instead, the airport offers free shuttle buses that connect terminals 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the service is offered 24 hours a day on an hourly basis. Only arriving passengers with connecting flights are permitted to use Naia's free transfer buses. Fair warning, these buses can become cramped with bags piled high, and a good chunk of the route is on public roads. This means that traffic can cause significant delays, especially if you're transferring between terminals 1 and 3. The official pickup locations for the free transfer bus are listed here for each terminal. When in doubt, look for posted signs or ask airport employees in the arrivals hall for assistance. If you're feeling adventurous, you can walk between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2, as they are only about a kilometer apart. A wide sidewalk does connect the two terminals, and it's a relatively safe route traversed by many airport employees. I would not recommend walking between any other terminals. On this route between Terminals 3 and 4, it's congested, noisy, dusty, and honestly, somewhat treacherous. Access to sidewalks is sporadic, and multiple construction zones make getting around, like this right here, 
make getting around as a pedestrian very challenging. I can only imagine having to take several pieces of luggage with me and this is bad enough, frustrating and unsafe. So again, do not attempt to walk between terminals two, three, and four. Another transfer option is the pay to ride Ube Express premium bus service. These buses travel between Terminal 3 and Naia's other terminals, and vice versa, roughly every hour between 5 a.m. and 8 p.m. According to Ube, bus pickup points at each terminal are located here, and the current cost to ride is 50 pesos. In my experience, Ube's terminal transfer service has been inconsistent and unreliable, especially at Terminals 1, 2, and 4. If you've got a connecting flight, I'd highly recommend taking the official free shuttle bus. Aside from buses, taxis and ride-sharing options like Grab are also available, though traffic delays and much higher prices should be expected. Also, be cautious when taking taxis in Manila, as scams and fair hiking practices are not too uncommon. Whatever option you choose to get to another terminal, plan ahead and expect transfers to take one to two hours. While we're on the topic of transportation, I should mention that Terminal 3 serves as a hub for affordable and convenient buses that connect the airport to destinations throughout the national capital region and beyond. I won't list all the companies and routes here, but I will include links to detailed information down in the description below. Notably, Ube Express provides service to and from major shopping malls and transportation centers throughout the city. Other companies, such as HM Transport, offer regular service to the nearby EDSA LRT train station and MRT metro station. For passengers heading north to Angeles City and Clark in the province of Pampanga, Genesis Transport offers numerous point-to-point -point bus trips every day from Terminal 3. Again, whenever you're on the roads here in Metro Manila, be ready to face major traffic jams. As frustrating as it may be, it's a normal part of daily life in this megacity. Okay, let's now head back inside Naya's largest terminal for a closer look. Terminal 3 can often be a busy, bustling place that can appear overcrowded and daunting when you first enter the building on Level 1 or Level 3. However, it does have some great qualities and features that I want to point out. Many spaces are open to the public, which means that even if you don't have a ticket, you can still enter the terminal and visit many of the banks, currency exchange offices, shops, cafes, and restaurants below, above, and around the main check-in area and security screening zone on level three. There are loads of local and international restaurants, mostly on levels one and four, offering fair prices that are not too much higher than what you would find outside of the airport. Take a look at some of the dining venues and their menus. Level 4 features its own mall of sorts, with plenty of retailers selling everything from name brand clothing and travel accessories to chocolates, gadgets, and collections of Filipino gifts and souvenirs. There is also a 7-Eleven convenience store with snacks, drinks, and more. Now, here's a very important area that I need to highlight for foreign visitors. Located on level three, near the check-in area on the south side of the building, the Philippines Bureau of Immigration one-stop shop is open 24 hours a day and offers a number of common immigration services, including visa extensions. That's right, for many foreign tourists wishing to stay in the Philippines for a longer period of time, you can conveniently visit this official office immediately after arriving in the country, fill out a simple form, 
pay several thousand pesos, and walk away in a matter of minutes with a one-month visa extension. Be sure to check all specific information on the Bureau of Immigration's website, which I'll include in the description below. If you're looking for a spot to properly rest and relax, the Wings Transit Lounge on Level 4 offers affordable capsules and private rooms for short stays. It's a modern, clean, and comfortable space with all the essentials, and it's perfect for getting some shut-eye before or in between flights. For me, the beds, amenities, and lounge facilities are all very good and reasonably priced. Visitors can grab snacks and drinks, freshen up with a shower, unwind with a massage, work on computers in the business center, and securely store their luggage. Apart from the Wings Lounge, luggage storage is available for all passengers on Level 1, and the rates are not bad. Okay, without dismissing Naya's numerous shortcomings in terms of overall convenience and accessibility, this one feature is a game changer that dramatically raises the bar for this terminal and the airport as a whole. Located on level four, Runway Manila is a covered overpass, free of charge, that connects Terminal 3 to Newport City, a 25-hectare privately owned township featuring upscale hotels, restaurants, residential complexes, convenience stores, shopping malls, a casino, movie theater, and a performing arts venue. In minutes, travelers can pass over busy roads and a huge expressway, soak up great views of the airport and surrounding area, and access tons of entertainment, shopping, lodging, and dining options within Newport's integrated resort. Hotels, guest houses, Airbnbs, and private apartments are available on a wide spectrum of price points, and there are certainly affordable options not far from the entrance to Newport's Runway Manila. If you've got a long layover in Manila, or if you just want to stay an extra day before or after a flight, this is an ideal, modern, organized, and stress-free area to find fairly priced accommodation, drop off laundry for cleaning, chill in a spacious coffee shop, get a massage, catch one or several of the latest movies, browse a wide selection of shops, and sample local and international cuisines. Newport has become a go-to city within a city for me, and I'll repeat that it's directly across from Terminal 3. Okay, here's a quick insider tip. If you're looking for more affordable options for lodging, dining, and other services, you can come here to Monluna Street at the northwestern edge of Newport City, still minutes away from Terminal 3, and find a room for 1,500 pesos, grab a bite to eat for 200 to 300 pesos, get a massage for 500 pesos, get a haircut for 150 pesos, and even do your laundry for 135 pesos. Finally, I'll mention Salem Complex next to Terminal 4 as another terrific option for affordable accommodation options, restaurants, and coffee and tea shops. This budget hotel is where I normally stay for about 1,000 pesos per night. It's basic, clean, and highly rated. The cheapest offerings include a private room and shared bathrooms and showers. The best part is that Terminal 4 is about a five minute walk away, and I can easily catch a grab to any of the other terminals. As a bonus tip, Urban Connect Hotel in front of Terminal 1 provides decent rates for rooms, and within the hotel complex, you'll find restaurants, car rental offices, and a spa. The entrance to Terminal 1 is an easy five minute walk away. In conclusion, Ninoy Aquino International Airport has no shortage of drawbacks that are widely reported online and in the media. But as I've discussed today, there are ways to navigate this airport like a pro and maximize the positive qualities, offerings, and location of this historic gateway to the Philippines. 
I'd also like to add here that time and again, I find that Filipinos by a large majority are incredibly kind, hospitable, and welcoming. And here at the airport and across the entire country, that speaks volumes about the warm heart of this nation. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be very helpful. Please be sure to share your comments, questions, or any additional tips and recommendations that you have from passing through Naya down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Wherever your future global adventures lead, I wish you and your loved ones many happy trails ahead. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.